Hi friends, this is Sarah from Crafting and Relaxing. Thank you so very much for joining me. Today it's a tutorial, which I don't do a lot of tutorials, but Nancy had a question on this and I realized it's Thursday night and I told you it would come out Friday, so here we are. What we're going to make is shakers and I'm gonna insert a couple pictures of them. I have traditionally put these on journal covers. You can put them on tags. You could put them on a card. In today's example, I'm gonna use butterfly stuff because I have some butterfly journals coming up. So these are cut aparts from a paper pad. It's a pretty thin one, a Michaels paper pad. The thickness of this does not matter. What matters is, do you love it? And you don't want your writing or a bunch of embellishments down here because think about the fact that when it's sitting, all the sequins are gonna to fall to the bottom, so that's gonna be covered up. Plus, you're gonna sew around the edge. And depending on how good you are at sewing, it may not be close. Mine isn't that close. So you could use those. You could use a big card like this, but if you're gonna do something like this, you probably wanna get a little crazy with what you put in it. Here's a butterfly example for you. This one has two butterflies. If I use this one, I should probably use some really big die cuts, maybe fairly sturdy, but I should be prepared for them to get stuck or caught in each other. And if that's not something you can deal with, maybe this isn't a good idea for you. And honestly, I'm not sure if it's something I can deal with. I might try it on one of my own journals first. So I usually use this size, either vertical or horizontal. I had a smaller one set out somewhere that I thought would be fun. This one would be fun. It's just cute, isn't it? So let me show you what I do, because it is really easy. You can also make them right on tags. You could use tag shape paper. I cheat when I do these. I just sew a rectangle here, and then I leave this part untouched because I want to put string and stuff through this anyway, and I'm not gonna not shape. Pick something that you want to make into a shaker. Last weekend in updates, we talked a little bit about what supplies you would need to gather. Some tool, you take it, you don't have to worry about cutting it straight because we're gonna trim it after we sew. I just cut, eh, maybe a half inch or an inch around. It might stretch, it might move, but you don't want it so big that it's hanging in your way. See, it's very scientific for me. And sorry, I'm sure the white is nearly impossible to see. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this tool onto this piece of paper. I'm going to start down here, I think I usually start in the left-hand corner. I sew up, around, down, and then I come in. Sometimes I turn this corner and go in. It depends on if the corners are rounded. It's easier to do if it's square, just because I know how to pick up the foot, pivot, and go. Sometimes on the rounded corners, I have a harder time. And then I'm gonna leave a space open. Remember in maybe middle school, you made a pillow. You stitched around it with the machine and then you left space so you could stuff it. That's what we're gonna do here. And then we're gonna sew over that little hole. So most of our sewing is done way before all that junk is in our way. Once you see it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah. Now I am using gold and black thread. If you know me, it's because that's what's in the machine. I'm just gonna take this with extra on each side and set it down. If you were worried about it fitting, you could maybe like tape across the back a little to the tool. Just give yourself some room and see how it goes. This is crafting and relaxing. It's not supposed to be stressful. Now take your threads and be sure that you let the tool go through and your threads aren't gonna get tangled up and then start where you wanna start. I usually, especially on a card that's this plain, I use the edge of the foot. So I don't try and get crazy close. And I'm sorry, you're, that's the best I can do for you. And if you're trying to go to sleep, be warned. I'm probably gonna have sewing machine sounds in this video. On this one, I'm gonna do a straight stitch. I think maybe that's a little easier. I don't know that it matters a lot. I'm gonna put my needle down where I wanna be about yay and I think my foot's gonna be close dropping the needle into the paper just like if you were sewing with fabric I don't usually sew right here I moved this for you so this might be super tricky <laughs> okay so my foot is down my needle is in the paper now I'm gonna push go oh 
I went a little too far, so I'm gonna drop my needle. I'm gonna go backwards. Then I'm gonna pivot. I'm gonna lift my foot. If you're not real familiar with sewing, I'm gonna turn this all the way. I'm gonna drop that foot and I'm gonna come straight across the top. And this time I slowed down, I'm gonna finish this stitch, drop my needle in, lift my foot, pivot, drop my foot down, sew straight to the end. I'm using the word straight pretty liberally. Now, I like where my needle is, so I'm gonna pivot. I'm definitely gonna come around this corner and I'm gonna sew towards us for a while. Then I'm going back, then I'm gonna drop it. Okay, now there's gonna be a little mess up where I went off. Let me show you what it looks like at this moment. See, I'm not gonna throw that out. I'm gonna call that character. And then see what I did right here? And I, because I have a different thread in the back, sometimes it shows a little, and I'm not very good at setting my tension. None of that matters. Now, if I was thinking, I probably would have done some back stitching there too. But when I put this on something, I glue the heck out of it. So I'm not too worried. I have a ridiculous amount of purple sequins. There may have been a buying problem. If you have sequin mixes, like, like one of these, you could pick out some stars if you have an embellishment wand, or you could sit down and see this bag has larger stars in it. They're purple, so we're not gonna use them for this, but I might use them on something with a touch of blue, because they're kind of, sorry, they're bluish and we're doing purple, so I wanna stick with purple. But you can dig through different mixes that you have, mix and match, come up with something. I use an iced teaspoon, some people have a little tiny spoon, somewhere I have a glitter spoon, doesn't matter. Now, we cannot use glitter. Do not use glitter in this. I can use, oh, let's use some of these. Some of these tiny embellishments that I don't know where they came from. Somebody must have happy mailed them to me. I'm gonna put some of these. They might flip backwards because they're not gonna be glued down. So I'm gonna take out the really big ones and just use the ones that will move around. I'm gonna just dump those in in that little space right there. Then uh, it's this is a pretty light colored thing and it's a little bit violet. I have these that have uh, little flowers in them right there. I don't know if you could see that. Let's use some of those. Oops, I very often dump them on the counter. And also the tool is a little hard to see and I got my thread in the way. Now, if I had left the end open all the way, that would probably help me. But I do sometimes, if I have my needle, remember when I said I like where my needle is? So that's why I left it there. Now, okay, we're getting close to too much, but I want a little more contrast. I like some wow. So either gold, I wish we should do this live so you can vote, either some gold or I wonder if this pinkish purple, eh, I just, I'm picky about whether it's gonna match. So let's go gold. And I like these little ones, they're cute. I think these were from a, a Tuesday morning pack. And some of you are just horrified probably watching me work and making a mess. And you know, I just have fun and I'll clean it up afterwards, don't worry. Okay, so I already have quite a bit. It does not take much, you guys. If you get too much in there, it won't shake. It'll just be too full. Start super skimpy. And then what I do is get it mixed up, shake it around, and see what you think. In my shakers, I like to have variety in color and size. This is kind of a funny one because I don't have, except for like a couple right in there, I don't have any full size sequins in there. Let's add just a few. Just a few, she says. How about, now this is where an embellishment wand is handy. If you have one, great. If you don't, you don't have to run out and buy one. I just wanna pick up a few full size sequins 
because there just isn't much variety and I love to have variety in my shakers. If you are trying to be a responsible craft purchaser, think about buying mixes instead of solids maybe because you get more variety and you can just pick things out of them that you wanna use. I just want a couple because there's a lot of stuff in there already. And this one, and this one. Okay, now I think I like it. That's my whole system. If I didn't like it, I could dump it out and start over. It, or if I got way too much, now I'm gonna sew that closed. And for me, because I have different thread in the bobbin and the top, I have to be sure that I keep it the same way all the time, right? And I sew right side up because that's where the tool is, it's on the front. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna start right here because I've already backstitched, it's a little bit messy. And then I'm gonna try and go right to here and backstitch and be done. So we're gonna do some variation of that. We are not gonna leave this open. I'm gonna drop my needle right into those other holes if I can. Hit my pedal, back stitch, go. Now I am sewing on the gold thread from before. I don't, you guys probably can't see that. I don't love that, because that's gonna get tangled up. So I'm gonna rescue that out. If you're going to trim the threads anyway, then you would trim them before you do this part. But I usually like to keep them so I deal with them and move them out of my way. And if you're not very experienced like me or not practiced lately, go slow because this is a small project. I'm going to take my scissors and you probably can't even see it, so you're just gonna think I'm crazy. And I'm gonna just cut right along the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna try not to cut any thread that may be sticking out, like right there. I don't wanna cut that. And I don't wanna cut my long ones if I can avoid it. So I'll move my threads around. And I find that I really like to have another layer of paper behind it. It gives it a really finished look. I have just glued them on tags or other things before, but I don't know, I just, I like it. And there's not like a perfect way to trim the tool, you know, no perfect. I find that I just trim it against the paper because it's super easy. It barely shows anyway, and I tried a couple where I tried to trim, I'll show you like in, so it was maybe a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. It just got too complex. So just go to the edge of the paper and call it good. There we go. So there is, let me zoom you out a little, a shaker. It has the border on it from the other paper and then I would take it I don't have any gold mirror cardstock right now. It would look amazing with that. It would look good with black. I know, you're thinking, black, is she crazy? Black with pastels, I just love it. I just love the look. And so, probably about like that. And I don't measure, I'm not really a measuring type, it's not my thing. But you know those cut aparts are almost always, um, let's check this one and see. Yeah, they're almost always three by four. So I'm just gonna cut us a piece of paper. I don't know that I'm gonna glue this on right now because if I knew what project it was going to, I would make sure that it corresponded with the project a little better and give myself just a little nice border around it. If I wanted rounded corners, I would round on the first layer before I sewed it, and then I would round on these. And these two, I just glue together. I don't worry about sewing the two together. This is also a really nice way, adding this back layer to make it a little more sturdy if you need to. Let's make one more together, and then I think you're set. I'll show you, we'll try rounded corners, okay? Bob. Oh no, because I wanna use these. I wanna use one of these, I think. This one, let me show you. I think this font 
is a little tricky to read and there's a lot going on in the background. So I don't think I'll make this a shaker. I love it, but I just think it might be a little hard to read if there's shaky stuff all over it. So keep that in mind too. These were from a digital that Mary sent me. These would work great. They are sturdy enough. They're small, they're cute. The flowers I think would show just fine even when the stuff was down there and you could still read your sentiment. You just wanna be really careful that all the decoration isn't down there. Let's make one of these. Oh, happiness is like a butterfly. Oh, this one's gonna look good with the black we already have, right? It would also look good with one of these bright colors. So on this one, I might have trouble with sequin colors. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, okay. I also have, for reasons I'm not quite sure of, these big things. Every once in a while, something big like that is fun. Now, three of them might be too much, but if you think, if they got down to the bottom, you could still read your message. See that? Uh, this one would probably work even better for those big items. I might do it in there. Again, they might get stuck and caught. So I'm going to set these aside with those. But if you're okay with that, like if you think these are the best flowers ever, uh, I'm borderline. Uh, I would definitely do it if I had a snowflake theme going on. Ooh, if these matched, I would use these. I bet I've used these in a shaker before. And sometimes I use thicker things like this. It helps everything shake but they might get stuck or turn around. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. So let's use some of this mix. These are light blue and clear. Yeah, those will be fun. Oh, it's some kind of beachy mix because it has sequin shells in it. We're not gonna use any of those. Uh, we're not going to round the corner, so because I do like this border. Here we go. This roll, like I said before, has lasted me forever. Just take it like this. Chop. I'm going to go a little faster on this one. Because I think you get the idea. And this one has a cute little red border. So I think I'm going to sew on the border. You know, they're all a little different. I am going to sew through the butterflies a little bit. I'm okay with that. doing is making sure that the tool doesn't ripple or do anything strange. I'm not managing it in any way. It just needs to be flat. There we go. Now let's take my little spoon. These things I'm gonna be really sparing with because they are so thick. Now there's a couple stars in there. You know I'm okay with that. I don't know if that really goes with butterflies, but sure, sure it does. Little more of that light blue. And what that will do is it will let the small things shake better. It will have them move around. I'm gonna try flipping some of these over because they're flat on one side and round on the other. And if they stay that way, great. And they might not. I've never made a shaker that I wanted to throw away. I mean, I, I don't know that you can go wrong and be totally unhappy with them. Let's put some of these little pastel circles in there. There. Let's put some of these weird green ones that I wouldn't think I would use, but I think might be kind of fun in here. This is just how I do it. Just see, okay, do you like it? Ooh, that's a kind of wild one. I think it could use, do I have yellow? Except for those, I don't want to use those. Uh, buttons. I would put some small buttons, especially if I was doing like a sewing one. That would be fun. These are oddly large 
And like I said, I like to have variety in size. And let's see if we can pick out, we can't really use the pink because obviously we've got red and orange going on. I think this is uh, graphic 45, but let's get some of these really big gold ones. And since this is a horizontal one, there's gonna be a lot of space at the bottom for the stuff to lay out. Oh, there's more flowers, but they're all pink. Okay, so let's put these big old sequins in there. And I don't worry about which way they're facing or anything like that. Okay, now those little tiny discs, they're kind of staticky and they'll sit, but imagine it's more like that. Oops, sorry, you can't see. There you go, on the front of a journal. I like the butterflies with shakers. That's fun. Now, do we need anything else? I haven't really used little seed beads in there. I'm pretty sure they would stay with the tool. So let's put a couple of those. What's the worst that can happen? They shake right out. And then I'm just gonna sew it. I'm gonna trim it a little because it does have, this one has a lot of fabric kind of out and about. I just have this little spot to sew. Now, this one, because I put chunkier stuff in, I'm gonna take my hand and kind of make sure that I don't sew it down tight. Does that make sense? I'm gonna move it so it, it has a little bit of slack when I set it down, just to be sure that I actually let my shaker shake. Needle, now, when you sew on paper, especially if you're me, Sometimes, you know, your bobbin or whatever gets mad. So hang on to your actual project when you're pulling it out because somehow my threads have gotten tangled and I want the thread to take the tension not to tear my project out. So I take my fingers and I pinch it down. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. You didn't see any of that, did you? Well, that's good. You didn't know I got tangled up. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna trim this like this. And this one actually has a tiny little black border on it. Again, it would be cute with some gold cardstock that I keep forgetting to buy. And it would also be cute on like red or orange or yellow. It's very fiery colors in it. And if you don't want long straggly threads on your project, just cut them right off because it would be a lot faster and easier. Okay, I love it. I like to have those long ones. And what I do is I trim them as I, oh, and my bobbin thread's showing a little. I trim them once I get my project figured out. Does that make sense? The style of it or how I want it. On this one, I the last one I felt like it could have used a wider border. So I think on this one, I might do it more like that. Or if I have a red that works, Maybe this red works. Yeah, that might be kind of fun. And I'd give it that edge and a border. You could, if you wanted to, you could give it a really big border on the front of your journal, like a quarter of an inch all the way around. Maybe it's a big journal and you're trying to make it bigger. So those are my shakers for today. I hope you enjoyed them. And I hope that answered your questions, Nancy. Leave me comments down below if you have any more questions. I'm always happy to help. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.